Hello everyone, welcome to today's segment of Strategic Talk. Strategic Talk is a series of video podcasts organized by VIPSS where we try to understand what do the experts think about some of the recent events. I am Tasma Valam Ahuna, currently working as a research intern at Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies. I will be hosting today's episode. In this segment, we have Parvis Karim Abbasi, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, East West University, as our guest. Welcome to our show, sir. Today we thank will be focusing on. Thank you, sir. Today we will be focusing on the crisis in Afghanistan, a perspective from Dhaka. So, sir, it's been a while since Taliban took control over Afghanistan. There has been a shift of power in Kabul. So, right. what are your thoughts on the transition of power about to take place in Afghanistan? Well, the first thing is, Ohana, is something that's been apparent for a long time, that a uh, hybrid regime, a regime without mass popular support, a regime that is propped up by artificial uh, uh, encouragement, that will not uh, basically last once, uh, once the international support is withdrawn. And that's exactly what we had seen, because uh, in recent times, for the last past uh, year or two, uh, the death knell of the Afghan national government under Ashraf Ghani had been uh, signed when the, the Trump administration entered into negotiations with the Taliban in Doha. What was telling was that, again, the Afghan national government was not even represented in terms of the negotiation. And once the Americans had signed a, a, a withdraw a, a agreement with them in terms of indicating where and when they're going to withdraw, the writing was on the wall because... Uh, even if we say that there were two and a half thousand American soldiers and a few others from other, a few other soldiers from other countries, basically they were the ones who were basically propping up the government, so to speak. And what the Taliban coming to power simply states that again, that with the West or let's say the United States, what would I say, uh, loss of will to fight or not to invest in, let's say, what they would see as a lost cause. The, the, and again, with the support of the neighbors, whether it's, whether it's Iran, whether it's uh, Russia, whether it's uh, China, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's Qatar or even distant Turkey, uh, what has happened was that Taliban has come up as, a, what would I say, a credible alternative in the transitionary stage. So this uh, in itself, and what we have seen is horrific scenes of evacuation, panic, pandemonium, and uh, a very, what would I say, chaotic withdrawal. So all of those things are symptomatic of, again, uh, myopia in terms of the West's engagement with Afghanistan. What was the reason for the war on terror? And again, uh, what was the reason for this hasty withdrawal? Now, that these are questions that only we can answer in uh, over time, but for now, it seems that Taliban is in possession of large tracts of Afghanistan, and they will be the forerunners in terms of trying to uh, form a national government. In fact, they have announced uh, the intentions of uh, setting up a national government, and they are announcing their potential candidates and ministers and filling it in. So uh, they are setting up what would, uh, in their own version of what they envisage in terms of Afghanistan, how it should be ruled, how it should be governed, only time will tell whether their experiment will be successful or not. Sir, uh, about being credible and in terms of forming a government, we know that the Taliban are expected to form a government or a kind of administration pretty soon. So what would be Taliban's strategy in terms of consolidating power following the fall of Kabul? Well, uh, one, one thing that we have seen in recent times is the Taliban government that we have had, or the or the Taliban uh, trans transitional government that we have, they are not the same Taliban that took place, uh, that took power from 96 to 2001. And uh, over here, as I've already ind indicated in the previous uh, segment, that support of the regional neighbors is key. The, we not only do you have Pakistan or large segments of the Pakistani military security and foreign uh, ministry apparatus supporting them. But you also have Russia stepping into the breach. You also have uh, China coming in as a savior in terms of economic traction. 
So, uh, and there's also Iran over there. So probably in the near neighborhood or immediate neighborhood, there is a consensus the Taliban is probably the best bet to stabilize the country. And China has already indicated that uh, they are going to invest in terms of, uh, in terms of basically, in terms of uh, naturally harvesting their mineral resources, natural resources, establishing connectivity all the way through a, a, a basically Gwadar port and extending BRI over there. And yet the Chinese have been quite cautious over there. The Russians are also willing to lend and invest in, uh, in Afghanistan. So is Iran, because remember, there's also Chabahar port in Sistan and Baluchistan. And there is the TAPI project, right? The Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India project. So that gas line that is coming in from Turkmenistan all the way to Pakistan's border port, Afghanistan will pay, play a pivotal role in terms of uh, hosting this power connectivity issues. So even if the West goes away, and we have seen idea little bits of this because ever from 10 to $13 billion of foreign exchange reserve that the Afghan central bank has, this has been already frozen. And we also have seen, again, uh, a large tranche of the IMF uh, loan that was being given, $450 million, that has been suspended in terms, and this is an economic pressure that's being exerted on the Taliban uh, victors of Kabul. That means they have to tow certain lines. And President Biden has also indicated as such. But, uh, and there is also a certain degree of, uh, what would I say, realization amongst at least uh, those tal senior Taliban leaders who are negotiating in, let's say, uh, uh, Doha, in K Qatar, that again, you cannot live in this globalized age as, as, in, so, as a, for example, like a pariah state. And you have 60% of Afghanistan's population are below 25 years old. And the last 20 years of occupation, say what you will, it has raised the education level, raised basic uh, human, uh, uh, what would I say, life expectancy, healthcare facilities, some amount of business has come in in the uh, small cities and the larger cities like Jalalabad, Kandahar, or uh, for that matter, Kabul. And there is also a brisk import and export in terms of rugs, far, furs, uh, uh, dry fruits, and so on and so forth. So Afghanistan uh, is now, whether they like it or not, part of the global economic structure. So the West trying to put a pressure on it might also backfire because the Chinese are stepping into the void. How much the Chinese are going to invest in terms of uh, the mineral resources, like the copper mines of Mas Sinai or other places, or the lithium uh, deposits or the rare earth minerals, that remains to be seen. And that is also contingent on uh, Taliban's ability to impose uh, political stability, impose law and order scenario, and to reassure the general Afghans because the Afghans themselves, uh, there is a mass exodus from Kabul and from Afghanistan. And you need skilled capital. You need skilled human uh, personnel to run modern day app apparatus. That much realization is working over there. And that uh, remains to be seen whether uh, uh, the Taliban manages to consolidate. But it won't, be, it won't be the same repeat case of 96, 2001, because now you have the Chinese, the Russians and the Iranians and the Pakistanis willing to invest in Afghanistan to stabilize it for their own interests. Sir, the case might be different this time and whether they successfully form a government or not, from the entire issue, there are some parties who are getting benefited and there are parties that are not. So how do you assess the role of potential regional actors in this new configuration of Afghanistan? That's a brilliant follow-up question, Ona, because uh, obviously, for the time being, we can say that the American-backed Western strategy has backfired. At least in terms, in tactically, the withdrawal might be, have been carried out on certain economic principles, but in terms of strategy, in terms of loss of reputation, in terms of loss of credibility, the damage that has been done to United States, that, that is uh, well uh, nigh irreparable. And uh, also, if you're talking about this, India probably has been blindsided by the American withdrawal because they have probably bet on the wrong horse. Already there are signs of a negotiation between Indian and the Taliban delegation in uh, Doha. So that's also there. The Chinese and the Pakistanis seem to be in a more favorable position because they have backed uh, apparently the current winners, which is Taliban. But again, how much they're going to reap the benefits, again, depends on, and as I always say, 
how quickly Taliban can conciliate all of Afghanistan and whether they can bring large segments of non Pathan, uh, non Taliban seg uh, population like the Hazaras, the Uzbeks, the Turkmens, uh, the Tajiks into their fold. That remains to be seen. So, again, uh, but the regional powers for now, it seems that the Chinese have stepped into the breach and they are in a more favorable position. Whether they continue to enjoy this advantage, that, uh, again, is too early to predict. But, uh, sir, in this whole scenario, where is Bangladesh and what about Bangladesh? Will this change in Afghan administration give birth of new security challenges in our country? Well, the answer as with most things is uh, yes and no. Uh, one of the reasons why is again, yes, because Taliban, uh, Taliban which is Afghanistan is basically a member. In fact, it's the eighth member of SARC. So as a member of the SARC, uh, as SARC fellow SARC member, of course, Bangladesh will be interested in the fate of Afghanistan. And uh, also it would want to ensure peace and stability within the South Asian region. And we have, uh, quite a significant number of Bangladeshi personnel working in microcredit uh, organizations who are operating over there or in healthcare or in banking sector or in telecom. So there is uh, that export of skilled human, uh, by, uh, skilled human capital from Bangladesh to Afghanistan is taking place in a limited amount, but it is, and there is a limit, there's a certain degree of opportunity. Now, whether, and, and yes, often the victory of Taliban though for many reasons, and we cannot simplify this, can be also be, uh, be viewed by certain segments in Bangladesh as a victory against oppression or a victory against an unjust war by the West. And uh, again, this might also send uh, the wrong kind of message to some people who'd want to misconstrue it. But then again, uh, there is a need for, uh, just like every other country across South Asia, Central Asia and the uh, uh, Middle East, there is a need to keep an wary eye on uh, radical organizations, which thrives on chaos, which thrives on violence, and which thrives on coming up with distorted narratives, especially due to the uh, due to COVID times, where there's a lot of economic hardship and loss of lives. So that is also that has complicated the situation. And again, uh, to be fair, at least on paper, the the Taliban government or Taliban spokespersons have been at great pain to say that they wouldn't allow their uh, country to be used as a hub for exporting terrorism. But already we see uh, the claims by ISIS uh, Khorasan over there. And the problem is the unraveling of the Afghan National Army and this dispersal of at least 200 to 300,000 Afghan soldiers uh, into neighboring countries. And the fact that again, other countries might have a stake also in destabilizing Afghanistan further in their own version of the new great game. All of those things pose security challenges. So uh, we must uh, coordinate with our neighbors, all of our neighbors within the region and outside the region. And again, there should be close sharing of intelligence, which already takes place. So that again, uh, uh, and we should keep a wary eye on the, the developments of Afghanistan again because nothing can be ruled out and it's uh, better to be cautious rather than to be sorry. Thank you, sir. And I believe we have come to the end of today's segment and the topic itself is pretty vast and is drastically changing over the course of time. And we still don't know where it might go or where it might stand in the next couple of months. So thank you so much, sir, for coming. Thank you and for having me. And to have this issue-based discussion with us. And we had some pretty insightful points from what you said. And that was all for the episode of today's episode of Strategic Talk. Thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. See you all in our next episode. Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you.